Hey guys, and welcome to Trinity Alliance Group of Buffalo Inc. presentation of Wholesaling Real Estate Mini Camp, Mini Boot Camp Session 5. Now, thank you for those of you who have been to us, been with us, been with me, I should say, all week. This is Delisa Robinson, your hostess with the mostest, the real estate diva in time. Okay, today's session is Wholesaling Real Estate our mini boot camp session five. Even though we've given out a ton of information, we still call it a mini boot camp because in our regular wholesaling real estate boot camp, we give out much, 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 much more in depth uh, information, examples, and everything else. So that's why it's, this is just a mini boot camp, not to mention we're under a one hour time constraint. So, with that being said, let's dive into our material for today. If this is your first time with us, I'd like to introduce myself. I am Delisa Robinson, CEO and owner of Trinity Alliance Group of Buffalo Incorporated. I have been out here in these real estate streets for 22 years doing business consulting, full service real estate firm means we sell real estate, both retail on the market and wholesale off market. We do have our investment division where we have invested our profits, our monies with other people's projects and other people have invested their monies with our projects. We also do investment lending, which right now due to the nationwide shutdown that is slowly recovering and starting to open up, banks are not doing a whole lot of lending. So that's something you wanna talk about. Please inbox me your information and we will talk in detail at length and I can give you your pointers on which way you need to go with that. We also do portfolio building and management, not property management, portfolio management, meaning just like your stockbroker can tell you when to trade your stocks, we can tell you when to sell, when to buy your properties. That's how that goes. Yesterday we went over, we went over the ins and outs of negotiations with the seller and the purchase agreement. Today we're going to talk about marketing strategies. Now that you have this house under contract, what's your marketing strategy if you don't already have a buyer for it? So that's what we're gonna to discuss today. If you don't have a buyer, what's the marketing strategy? And then we're gonna talk about how you host the, how you show the property and the assignment contract. Those are our topics for today. I am going to get started because I know your lunch hour is your lunch hour and you don't have a whole lot of time with that. So what is your marketing strategy? First of all, you need a strong marketing campaign. And yes, you do need a campaign, a marketing campaign to sell a house. You can't just say, oh, I have a house and people are going to come. How are they going to find out about this house? Where is this house? You have to know those things. So I'm going to talk to you about the content, the placement, and the open house that you should host. Yes, you should do an open house because time is money and money is time. And nobody has time to waste money. And by wasting money is this, if you are going to get a $5,000 assignment fee, you wanna break that down into how many hours you worked. And some of you, the way you work, and I'm going by the people who have contacted me throughout this process. I've been doing wholesale, I've been doing, like I said, I've been in this game for 22 years and I always hear people, wholesalers and licensed real estate agents who say, Oh, I've shown this house a million times. Why? Why are you, if you're the house, if you have the house under contract to show it, to list it, why are you doing the showing? So we're gonna go through that detail very, very quickly. But let's start with content, okay? First of all, your content should contain key words. Key words meaning descriptive, grab your attention, you need a call to action, and you need some details. You need to get to the pain point. Why should they buy your house? Out of all the other houses that are out here on the market, why should they buy yours? Those are your key words. May, never, ever, ever post, I have a house and there's no picture. You need pictures. And I'll be honest, videos work better than pictures. So if you've done the walkthrough and you've gotten permission to record or take pictures, do it. As you're walking through the house, post that video, because that will take away from the amount of people that actually need to see it. That's called a virtual showing. 
which is what we're all doing right now since real estate is shut down. So you're going to get your videos. You're going to put them out. You're going to get your keywords. You're going to might even include some still pictures with the videos. You might want a still picture of the furnace, the roof, the foundation, the electric box, the things that we've talked about all week. You want pictures. Then you need to know where are you placing these ads? Of course, you're going to do it online, Facebook. You're going to do all the Facebook real estate investment groups that you're in. You're going to do all the Facebook wholesaling groups that you're in. And you're going to put this on Marketplace. You're going to put it all over Instagram. And you're going to do a TikTok video because that's probably where you should video your um, record your video anyway. You're going to email. Email is placement. When you email this out, email a picture, a still picture of the property with the, con with the description. This lessens time. A lot of people go, oh, okay, I don't need to see it. Here's my offer. Because when you work with real investors who have the money and they're actively buying, you don't have to show them this house a million times. Okay, and live stream. What's better than that? A live stream will get you more hits, more likes, more shares, more everything. Because as you're walking through a house and you're on your Facebook Live or your Instagram Live, people are signing in to look and see what you're doing, especially your investors that follow your business page because that's where you're going live from. Not your personal page, your business page. Then when the live is over, share it to your personal page and let people share it if they want to. You can then share the video through to all of your real estate groups, all of your wholesaling group, all of your investor groups. That is how you sell a house without doing a whole lot of work. You spent one hour in a house, you videotaped it, and that videotape is working 40 hours for the next week for you. The problem with the marketing portion of this business is a lot of you are working too hard and not smart. So today we're gonna to talk about working smart. And the internet is your friend, social media is your friend. How else are you gonna sell a house without having other people sell it for you? Then you're gonna schedule one showing, one. You're gonna schedule one showing. Your showing is at whatever time and date that you say. And guess what? Whoever can come will come. And if you don't get an offer then, then you'll go to the people you knew were interested but can't make that time. But if you get an offer, your job is done, it's over. So you schedule one showing. At that showing, if you choose, you can have an information sheet. Yes, an information sheet is going to have the property on it. It's gonna have the picture of the property and your brief description underneath. It's not gonna be, it doesn't have to be professionally done. It doesn't have to go through Vistaprint or anything. You can go right to canva.com, C-A-N-V-A, set up a free account and do all of this stuff that I'm, asking, that I'm telling you to do. They will allow you to design your Facebook posts. They will allow you to do Instagram. They will allow you to do TikTok videos. They will allow you to do flyers. They will they allow you to do all this stuff and it's a free service. Do they have a paid version of their service? Absolutely, it's $13 a month. I pay for mine every month. But it is a necessity. You can create a sign-in sheet, you can create an information sheet and you can schedule, you can do your flyers. So any questions about what we've just talked about? If you are a wholesaler, you need a Facebook page, you need an Instagram, you need a TikTok video, and you need a presence on those social media outlets. Even Twitter, I forgot to put Twitter on here, but even with Twitter, you need that outlet, you need that, you need to have a social media presence in order to make this work for you. You can't make this work if you're not working. And you wanna see how quickly, you wanna know how quickly things go through social media? Post one, one picture of a house and say, A or B, which kitchen is better? And watch how many people comment underneath. 
watch how many people share that one post and all you're asking is A or B, which kitchen is better? A or B, which front door looks best? I do it all the time just to keep people engaged when I don't, in between houses that you might not have out there on the market. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Say yes, yes, yes today if you understand what I'm saying. Okay, we got quite a few yeses, yes. Oh yeah, definitely. And Sean, if your son has a photography business, Sean, Susan says yes, Cynthia says yes. Sean says, yep, my son does that with his photography business too. Absolutely. And he probably takes these beautiful pictures, puts them up and says, hey, who would like to be my next model? And you get people, hey, I'll give you a free hour session if you model for me in my pictures to build my portfolio. I, like I said, photography is a hobby of mine, so I've done it. I've done weddings for cheap just to get my name out there. And then I decided I didn't want to do that. I wanted to focus and stay in real estate. But now it's still a hobby of mine. I still, I have beautiful pictures, but you have to use that. Cause I mean, just think about it, Sean, you can have your son come with you, take pictures and send them out. Even if, if you wanted to get a more professional look to your pictures, even though most of the houses we go into, they're vacant, they're boarded up, they're ugly. We get it, but an ugly house doesn't have to be presented as an ugly house. That's the thing. You don't have to present ugly as ugly just because it's ugly. All right. So now let's look at some samples of good and bad ads. And don't laugh at my picture. It's what I do. All right. I did not take this picture, but I did steal it from somebody who took it for me. Okay. This, this is on the left is a bad ad. House for sale, DM me for details. Will somebody DM you? Of course they will. But guess who's going to DM you the most? Other wholesalers. Oh, where is it located? I might have a buyer. Oh, let's JV. Let's do this. You don't want to give up half your money. You don't want that. You do, but you don't. You do if you have to. Like if it's a hard house to sell, you can't find anybody and they have a buyer for it, then yeah, you're going to do that. But... This, le this post on the, on the left lacks everything and goes against everything you as a wholesaler should do. First of all, where is this house? How many bedrooms does it have? Is it all brick or is just the front of it brick? How long has it been boarded up? How, where, I can tell it's a, a crazy house because this is what it, it is what it is, but if you look at the way I presented it to you on the right, 123 Main Street, single family residence with three bedrooms, one and a half baths, all brick in the Roxbury district asking 25,000. I require proof of funds in a 2,500 EMD that's non-refundable. I'm showing Saturday at one. Who's coming? You can put that down. Who's coming? Drop your email if you want. Drop your emails if you like this property or, you, or something similar and I will find it for you. You use this property as your lead magnet to get other buyers. They may not want this property, but they go, wait, she can find properties like that? Hold on a minute. Let me get in contact with her. You see what I'm saying? They, you use this as your lead magnet to build your buyers list. If you, this is your first contract, do you know how many people are going to say, oh, I'm waiting, I want to see that house? Tons. Especially if you remember the three major groups you should put them in. You post it on your business page. You post it on your real estate investor, in all of your real estate investor groups, and you post it in all of your wholesaling groups. You have to market your property. That's what you have to do. So now you're, show, you're showing this on Saturday at one o'clock, right? So Saturday comes one o'clock, you show the house. What are you gonna say then? Helpful hints, set a deadline for offers. At this price point, advise them that it is cash only. And they, if they want it, they will come. 
So what I mean by setting a deadline, once at one o'clock Saturday, everybody shows up. There's no COVID-19, so we don't have to worry about social distancing. Everybody's in the house. Within an hour and a half, you're done showing the house. And you tell everybody as they leave, hey, I need your, hour, I need your offers within 24 hours with proof of funds. Hey, don't forget, I need, your hour, I need your offers within 24 hours with proof of funds. Now, if you're saying that to the people as they're leaving out, then what you're gonna do is if you had them sign in as they came with their email address, you're gonna email that property to them again. You're gonna email your flyer to them again and say, hey, just a reminder, offers are due by 1 p.m. on Sunday. And I do need proof of funds to accompany the offer. And you just sit back. Real estate agents do this all the time. You now are doing something similar. Only you, most of your deals are going to be in cash and you're going to get a bigger commission check. Now, you've shown that house once. Say five or six people, five or six of your investors show up and you get four offers. You're not necessarily going to take the highest offer. You might, you might not. Depends on how that offer is structured. So that is something that we get more into detail with later in our other boot camp, but because this is such a short time and I really want to get to the assignment contract and go through it the way we did the purchase agreement yesterday. So I'm not going to get into that right now. So you set a deadline for your offers and you advise them and remind them if this is a cash offer, you have to make sure it's cash only. And it, like I said, if they want it, they're going to put their offers in. They're going to meet every demand that you have. A good investor is going to say, wow, that's a good solid house and a good solid area. Let me just go ahead and drop this $25,000. But here's the kick. They're also going to look and see how many other people are there. How many people are really showing interest? As they're walking through, they're listening to what other people are saying to see how much interest everybody else has, you're gonna get more than 25,000 for the house. Now say you want it, the person who owns the house, they want it for 20, you added your $5,000 assignment fee to it. And somebody comes and say, you know what, I'm gonna give you 35,000 for the house. I ran the numbers and they're great. Because when you emailed out this house, you sent your comps with it. So they could do the ARV too. You see what I'm saying? You help them, you help yourself sell this property. So the first thing you're going to do, the first thing they're going to do is all the offers are going to come in and they're going to come in. Some are going to come in at right at 25. Some might come in at 20. Some might come in at 30, 35, depending on how much of a value that property has. Say somebody comes in at 28, 30, you, you're going to say yes all cash proof of funds. I've even done this where I've, as an investor, I put in an offer. Here's my offer. Here's my proof of funds. Here's my EMD check. You will get those at, you will get those investors that will do that. Here's the EMD check. And you put a little note right on the check. Don't cash unless you're accepting my offer. And that's what happens. See what I'm saying? So it's just as simple. You just have to be organized when you get this done. You have to do it so that you're working less on the same deal. You don't want to continuously work the same deal over and over and over. So offers and what to accept. All right, let's see if we can figure this out. We pretty much saw them. Okay, here are the offer tips. Never accept an offer verbally without a deadline for the contract to be signed. Because here's what's going to happen. Say it's just you and one other person that show up and they go, yeah, I want it. I offer you 28,000. I can give you the 25. And if they say they're going to give you what you're asking for, you can go ahead and take that. Or you can say something like, you know what? Give me, give me, have the contract within 24 hours. I'm going to do another showing tomorrow morning. That's going to make them up their price because they don't want you to show it to anybody else. State when the EMD is due and make sure it's in the contract. 
So when you're talking and you agree to a contract, yes, I agree, you can give me the 25,000. I need your EMD within 48 hours, or I need your EMD within, by Monday. If it's Saturday, I need it Monday by four o'clock. $2,500 EMD, they can write you a check right there on the spot sometimes. Or they'll say, you, can you, do you mind picking it up? Because I'm going to be out so-and-so on Monday. Can you come pick it up? Or can I have somebody drop it off to you? They'll ask you those questions. Make a solid arrangement. Send a copy. As soon as you have a signed copy from the, from, from the assignment contract, you send the assignment contract to your attorney with the signatures. That's how that works. How do you, how do I send it? How do I send this on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday? You scan it into your computers. And I don't know if you guys realize this and here's a helpful tip, but if you have an iPhone, like I do, and I don't promote any particular product, I just tell you what I use. If you have an iPhone like I do, the notes section is a scanner. You can scan in notes, you can put in a note, hit the camera to take a picture and on it is going to come up with four different options scan documents take a photo or video or go to the photo library or cancel hit scan documents and take pictures of the pages of the contract of the assignment contract it scans it as a pdf and you email it right to your attorneys i don't know if an android can do that because i don't have an android that's why i don't know <laughs> Cynthia, you know I'm an iPhone fanatic, so yes, I am going to always talk about what I have, and because I, I tell everybody, if you're in real estate, you may want to look into getting a second phone. If you love your Android for everything else, use your iPhone for real estate, because you're so, it's a, it's a computer, right in your hand. You could do so much with it, and Cynthia always gets on me about that, because ah, here we go again about the iPhone. Eh, yep, going to tell you again. So you can scan your contract right there. You should have had blank contract with you when, he, when you went to visit this house and show this house with this buyer. So he signs the contract, you sign the contract, take a picture, click, click, guess what? It's sent to your attorney. Get his attorney's email address while he's standing there. You can send it to his attorney too. So that way, all the attorneys Monday morning when they wake up bright and early and decide to work, they have all the paperwork that they need. It's a done deal. Do as much as you can in that one hour then it's like you made five thousand dollars in three hours versus five thousand dollars and i worked all week long on this property trying to get this property sold and promoted so that's what you want to do that's the type of business you want to run you want to run a self-sufficient business you want to run a business that doesn't need a lot of work because think about it how many houses do you plan to get under contract in a given month say four Say you contract four or five houses a month and you had one showing every week and you had one offer every week and you basically got a contract under, you had a per, basically got a property under contract every week for a month. That would give you four deals going at a $5,000 minimum. You just made 20,000 plus. And guess what you got time to do? Work on the next month already while you're in the middle of this one. And you just repeat this process over and over and over. And that's how you have it. That's how you build a cash flowing real estate business, wholesale real estate business. You are going to make sure each offer that is submitted to you is submitted with a proof of funds. You're going to adhere to all of your contract dates. Here's what a lot of wholesalers, this is where a lot of wholesalers mess up. If on your contract, it says that EMD should be paid to you within three days. If it's not paid to you within three days, take the next offer. Make them call you. You make them, make sure you call them. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Make sure you call them and advise. I don't have your earnest money deposit, so I'm gonna go with the next offer. $2,500, they might zell it to you right away. They might cash up it to you right away. And then have you send them an email to confirm that you received it. Sometimes it's just a slip of, it just slips their mind. So you make sure you call and say, hey, I don't have your earnest money deposit. And if mine is due and you have until 5 p.m. on this date in my contract, you have until five o'clock on this date. 
So if it's Saturday and I don't give three business days because this is not a, no, you have three days, three calendar days. So my deadline might be Tuesday by 2 p.m. or Tuesday by 5 p.m. Banks close at four o'clock where I am oh, every day except Friday. They close at four o'clock. So you have to get, and banks, and some banks are open seven days a week because a lot of these grocery stores now have banks and banks inside and you can go in and pull money out and do transactions on Saturdays and Sundays. So don't give me that. I couldn't get to the bank. I didn't do this. It sounds like BS to me and I don't want it. So you keep all of your backup offers in case this deal, because not all deals are solid. So you're going to accept backup offers. Are you accepting backup offers? Yes, I am. Yes, I am always. Because if that EMD isn't in, you're going to take the backup offer. If that person decides in the middle of the contract that they don't want it, they don't want the house anymore. First of all, you're going to keep the EMD. Second of all, go to the next person and give them, get them to give you an EMD within the next three days and close the deal and make the assignment fee. I'm all about this life. Making money. Making money for the people. Make money. Okay, whatever picture was here now is not coming up. Great. Internet's not working. But we're going to go into buyer negotiations. Now, here's where you're going to start negotiating things with your buyer. And then we're going to go into the assignment contract, okay? Never accept an offer verbally without a deadline for the contract to be signed. So if they say, if you're talking to a buyer one-on-one -on -one and they say, okay, I want the house for 25,000. Okay, that's fine, but can you get the contract to me today by five? You, just that simple and stop talking. The problem is we get so excited. It's our first deal or I haven't had a deal in a long time, so I'm so excited and you forget the basics. Don't do that to yourself because you end up screwing yourself and not making any money for yourself you end up leaving money on the table so don't do that state when the emd is due by and make sure it's in your contract you're going to send a copy of the contract to your attorney so it's the same stuff we just talked about you're going to make sure your offer is submitted with proof of funds you're going to adhere to all your contract dates and you're going to accept all the backup deals i know i am that's with a new buyer now, when you, this is a new buyer, when you have a new buyer, this is, these are the things you must do because you don't want to be working for free. But, oh, no, you don't have to give me an EMD. Yes, you do. You've never worked with this person before. Why would you not take an EMD? You've never worked with them before. Take the EMD. Because if they back out because they're skittish or maybe they don't have the money they told you they have, then guess what? You're screwed because you didn't get an EMD, so now you work for free. Not cool. But when you have your repeat buyers, sometimes you will get an EMD. I'm going to be honest with you. I have my clients. I have some of my clients who have multi-million dollar real estate portfolios. I won't ask them for an EMD. But I also require that they wire the funds for the house to my attorney as soon as possible so that my attorney has the funds to do what needs to be done. And that's why I don't, it's either wire the full amount or pay the EMD. And you can ask that. Once you've built a relationship with people, people will ask you that. And I have one client who volunteered it and he volunteers it all the time. He goes, okay, let me know. I'll wire the money to the attorney. And he will do it because he's, he doesn't have, because just like we don't have time, he definitely doesn't have time. He's like, this is what you do, build a portfolio for me. Okay, just tell me how much I need to wire to, once I agree to this and I sign this contract, how much do I need to wire to the attorney? You give him the attorney's information and you say, yes, this is, this, I need you to wire that information to me. Give closing terms immediately. We have to close within 30 days. And I'm saying 30 days in New York state because we are a clear title state but I understand like in other states like DC, the DMV area, Texas, um, even Atlanta, you guys can close in like two, three weeks. And it doesn't matter. Jersey is the same way too. You can close like quickly. You don't have a problem. So 
you want to give closing terms immediately. And, tell, and that's why they're going to send you that money right away because they don't have time to sit back and be negotiating, going back through the bank, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Send your contracts to your attorney immediately and still accept backup offers just in case this falls through. Now, we're going to go through writing the assignment contract. Everybody ready? I know for a fact this is what Sean is tuned in for because she's been hounding me about it. And I told her I would get to it. So Sean, wake up, sweetie. Let's get going. <laughs> she didn't think I would call her out today. Oh yeah, I'm calling her out today. Okay, so Sean, this is for you. Write the assignment contract, okay? So now let's review the contract. I'm gonna do what I had to do yesterday. I had to pull this up. Pull this part up and I'm gonna take you all the way back to the top. You used to be able to hit command home and go all the way back up to the top, but let's do it this way. So the assignment of purchase and sale, that's a purchase and sale agreement. Hold on one second, guys. No, it is the assignment, I'm sorry. The assignment of purchase and sale agreement. So this, and I gotta make sure everybody can see this. This agreement, this assignment of purchase and sale agreement is made on the day. So it'll be today, we'll use today's date. Made on the eighth day of, my, it'll be May 8th, 2020. Between the assigner, which is you. So in my case, it would be Trinity Alliance Group of Buffalo. And the assignee, which is them. And we'll say ABC Holdings. Okay, whereas the assigner has entered into a certain purchase and sale agreement for the property located at 123 Main Street, Buffalo, New York, 1422222, whatever. You know, whereas the assigner desires to assign, transfer, sell, and convey to the assignee all of the assigner's rights, title, and interest in to and under said purchase and sale agreement, whereas assignee is desirous of receiving all of my rights. So basically, whereas and whereas means, whereas the assigner, Trinity Alliance Group, decides to give all of their interest in this property over to ABC Holdings. ABC Holdings is saying that they agree to purchase this property under the terms that I've negotiated with the seller. That's what an assignment is. I am just assigning my position in the contract and the person who has taken the assignment is saying, yes, I will honor the original purchase contract. That is why your buyer may ask you for a copy of the purchase contract. That is why, that is when they will find out what you are making on this deal. Okay, how do you get around that? Easy, I'll show you. So now, therefore, it is agreed hereby the assigner and the assignee as follows. Considerations. The assignee, ABC Holdings, agrees to pay a total amount of, here's where they're going to pay your price, which was the $25,000. That's what goes in that whatever price you agreed to between you and the end buyer is what goes in that dollar amount. Okay. It doesn't say anything about what I'm gonna pay, does it? No. This is called a blind assignment where you might be able to just get away with telling them this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna purchase for 25,000. And other good and valuable considerations, the sufficiency of which is hereby acknowledged. The assigner, Trinity Alliance Group, has assigned, transfer, sold, and conveyed unto ABC Holdings, the assignee, all of the assigner's rights, title, and interest into and under the purchase and sale agreement. A signer will receive his or her compensation upon closing in the amount of, of difference between said assignment and the purchase and sale. Most of your people aren't going to read that because that's when they say, well, what's the original amount? But they mo most of them don't even read that amount, which is crazy to me. Then the earnest money is given. A signee is to pay a deposit of $2,500 by way of non-refundable check or wire transfer made payable to and to be held in escrow at 
my attorney's office or my title company. Deposit money will be credited to the final sale price at the time of closing. Deposit money must be received within 48 hours of signing this agreement or assignee will be considered in default and this agreement will be null and void and all rights, titles and interests will revert back to the assigner immediately without notice. And since this is not refundable, you keep the money. Okay, funds to close. The assignee, ABC Holdings, must have the funds to close this transaction readily available in cash or certified funds upon signing this agreement and agrees to close said transaction by 5 p.m. on. That is when you put your closing date. Failure to close on this date puts the assignee in default and will result in the immediate void of this contract. So if they don't close on that date, it's an immediate void of the contract and a non-refundable deposit. A signer, Trinity Alliance Group, will retain the deposit as liquid damages. That's a way of saying, thank you for wasting my time. But I got paid for it, so I'm good. And all right title interest pursuant to the purchase and sale contract shall automatically revert back to the assigner, Trinity Alliance Group. Immediately, without notice, a signee authorizes escrow agent attorney to immediately disperse the entire deposit of amount to the assigner which is us, Trinity Alliance Group, without signing a cancellation of contract and a release of escrow. Meaning, I don't have to wait for you to sign that paper. Give me my money. That's how they, ro that's how they roll out here in these real estate streets. I keep telling y'all. It's so crazy the way that this goes. And you have a limitation of assignment. The assignee acknowledges that this agreement is not assignable by assignee without written consent of the assigner. This is how you get rid of the people who want to daisy chain your deal. Because you cannot assign this without my acknowledgement. You cannot assign it to someone else without telling me. Because if that someone else is holding up my transaction, then I have a problem with that. Okay, this agreement in the property is being purchased and as is conditioned based on their own inspection, investigation and evaluation thereof. That means it, you get a right to inspect it, look at it, view it, and you agree to buy it as is. So you don't get another inspection. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Communication and access to the property. A signee agrees that all communication with the sellers, tenants, and their respective representatives will be made through the assign or, which is us. Meaning, and this happened to me, I'm going to tell you this happened to me and I wanted to, I flipped out on my buyer. He called the tenants and told them he's the new landlord and he, would, he wanted to know when they were gonna be paying their rent because they were behind. Sir, you haven't purchased this building yet. We haven't closed. You have no legal right to call them and say anything. So now I have tenants that are calling me, flipping out, all kinds of things. Trust me, I went off and not in a nice way. Every four letter word that's ever been taught to me, well, it wasn't taught to me, I overheard, I said it. So we're going to um, teach your people not to do that. They are not to have any contact with anybody, seller or tenants, only through you. Meaning they should be calling you, you call the tenants and the seller. Okay. Liability, assignee, ABC Holdings, hereby assumes all assigners' duties and obligations under said purchase and sale agreement. The assignee, ABC Holdings, agrees to perform, perform, sorry, all covenants, conditions, and obligations required by the assigner, Trinity Alliance Group, under said agreement and agrees to defend, indemnify, and hold assigner harmless. Under said agreement. That is clearing you of any wrongdoing or any faulty properties or any liability toward this contract. The assignee further agrees to hold harm, assigner harmless from any deficiency or defect in the legality or enforceability of the terms of said agreement. That means that it is what it is. That's lawyers talk for, it is what it is. The disclaimer, your assignee agrees and acknowledges that the assigner is not acting as a real estate broker or agent in said transaction and is not representing either party, but rather is acting as a principal and assigning his or her interest in the above reference purchase and sale agreement. 
my real estate agents. That is where you also put, although a signee is a licensed real estate salesperson, you put a signer is a licensed real estate salesperson. The assignee acknowledges that the assigner is not acting as a real estate broker or agent in this transaction and is not representing either party. That's where you put your acknowledgement as a real estate agent. And I think I saw one or two of you on here right now. So I want to get that cleared up. Okay. Assignment fee. Signer agrees to receive and assignee agrees to pay in full said assignment consideration on or before the closing date of said purchase and sale agreement in cash. If there is a price reduction between the seller and the assigner, the difference will be added to the assigner's assignment fee. Picking up what they're putting down, they're saying that you're entitled to your assignment fee. Closing date shall take place no later than you put in the closing date that you input in above. Failure to close this transaction on time will result in the assignee being default and therefore authorized as escrow agent or attorney to immediately release their earnest money deposit. So if they don't close and they say they're going to close and you haven't agreed to an extension, they, that money becomes yours and you can send this deal to somebody else. Extension to close. You can do an extension. Any extension of the closing date will be considered at the non-refundable per diem rate of $1,000 per day, which must be deposited on the original agreed upon closing date to be considered and will be at the sole discretion of the assignor. That is your punishment to your buyer for not closing on time. Yeah, $1,000 a day for every day that they don't close on time. Be surprised how many people actually sign this <clears throat> because they know they're going to close on that day. Electronic delivery. Both parties agree that the electronic delivery of this assignment, along with any addenda or modification and or notices due, may be transmitted between them by fax machine, e-fax, telefax, or via email and be deemed valid and full and of full effect as long as it contains the original and or copies with both party signatures. Okay. Default. If the assignee is in default of this agreement due to no fault of the assigner, the assigner shall have the right to terminate this assignment of contract and declare the assignee in default. Assignee authorizes escrow agent attorney to immediately disperse the entire earnest money deposit amount to the assigner without signing a cancellation of contract and release of escrow. Now here's a section that I hold near and dear. Additional terms where you summarize, don't ever leave this blank, okay? This is where you are going to summarize this contract. Property is being purchased in as is condition, meaning you are not legally responsible for any repairs. Purchaser is a licensed real estate salesperson and is not liable for the transaction under their license. So that is where you will put that, you will put a signer. A signer is not, um, is not a, is a licensed salesperson is not liable for the transaction under their license. Per, a signer reserves the right to assign this contract. You know, things like that. Well, we already know it's an assignment contract, but purchaser requires access to the property or con, for contractor estimates, inspections, and appraisals. You require the assigner, this is from, we cut and paste this from the sale, purchase and sale agreement. So when we cut and paste this into our assignment agreement, it gives the other, and you put the price that you are purchasing for. You can put it here, or you can just say, these are the terms I agreed to. This is the price you're paying for me agreeing to those terms. You don't put the price that you are paying on this contract. That's why it's called a blind assignment. If they ask you to see the original contract, yes, you can give it to them. You must. You get what I'm saying? Everybody understand this part, the additional, The additional terms. Everybody understand additional terms. This is where you summarize your deal.
Everybody understand it? I need to see yeses. I don't see any yeses. I need you guys to let me know you understand this because this is crucial to you keeping this. Okay, Cynthia's got it. Wake up out there, people. Oh, Sean said she was taking notes, y'all. I hope everybody is taking notes because I'm telling you, this is the time and this is the con this is the one thing. If you are in the network, this is the one thing you guys have been asking me about. And I am giving it to you. I am giving it to you. And I am giving it to you. I am not going to repeat this again <laughs> in the network. We are done talking about these contracts. I am going to refer everybody to this video for contract assignment for the assignment contract and the video from yesterday from the assignment for the purchase agreement. We are not going to keep beating a dead horse. We have other things to do. This is where I need everybody to understand wholesaling. You are to summarize in additional terms. You are to summarize your original purchase agreement right here underneath additional terms. So that alleviates the need for your end buyer to see the original agreement. You get what I'm, y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I hope so. Uh-oh, sorry. Sorry guys, that was my fault. Let me get you back in. Hit stop share for by accident. I was trying to get to this comments. <laughs> Susan says she's still digesting it all. That's okay. Susan, you are new to our video series. If you have any questions, darling, please feel free to inbox me and I will help you out as much as I possibly can. Okay, this is a legally binding agreement by signing below. You acknowledge that you have read and fully understand this assignment agreement in its entirety. If you do not understand any part of it, please seek legal advice before you sign it. They're saying basically take it to your attorney, sign it and send me a copy back. And then you have the assigner and the assignee signature and that is the end of that. So we're gonna go back over here. Mm -hmm. So everybody understand, cause that is the end of this. I'm surprised I was able to do it in under an hour. Thank you for joining us today as always. I really appreciate you spending your lunch hours with me. If you need to reach out to us on social media, Trinity Alliance Group of Buffalo Inc. is where you can witness our masterpiece on Facebook. You can join us on our tag.716 Instagram page. We actually put up a beautiful flip yesterday that we just finished. Tag716 YouTube channel where all of our videos past and present will appear. And our tag716 underscore team on Twitter. On Twitter, I'm gonna tell you, anything I post on Instagram is usually what's gonna be, what you're gonna see on Twitter. So if you're not Twitter friendly like me, which is why my Twitter is linked to my Instagram and I can just hit one button and post in three different social media outlets, love it. So that's what you're gonna see on Twitter. Every once in a while we retweet some things that we've seen from other people, but for the most part on our Twitter page, you can find it on our Instagram page too. Our affiliates, I've discussed the Wholesale Network we are officially kicking off June 13th with Wholesale Boot Camp. The Wholesale Boot Camp is a four week session. It is four weeks long and it involves at all things wholesale. We go over lease options, subject twos. Everything that we did not cover here will be covered there. We go over the different ways to wholesale versus wholesale versus is reverse wholesaling, lease, lease to, subject to, uh, rent to owns, all that. We're all over that place. And that starts on June 13th. Up until you can register for that the entire four weeks for a price of $49.
The link will be on our Facebook pages and Instagram pages and everywhere else later today. Until May 20th, up until May 20th. So today is the 8th, you have 12 days that you can purchase the Wholesale Network for $49. The Wholesale Bootcamp, I'm sorry, for $49 for the whole entire four week series. That is a class we usually charge $500 for, $4.99. And because I will be 49 and June is my birthday month, I'm gonna have all types of deals and steals for the whole month of June. Wholesale Bootcamp is one of them, $49 up until May 20th. After that, the price is going to increase. I can't say to what yet, but it won't be the $4.99 just yet. I said, but it will increase. Every day on our YouTube channel, we uh, have a lunch and learn. Well, it's pre-recorded and we post it for our lunch and learn. We do it through Zoom and we post the videos later and everybody can go back and look and see what we learned and lunched and did everything for. Our Tag 716 Network and Mastermind Facebook group is where we house everything business, all things business, no matter what type of business you are in or looking to be in. You can join that network group and just share and experience and network with other people. We have posts yesterday, like yesterday we posted that you are able to post your business pages and have people follow you because we don't do a whole lot of advertising in that group because it is strictly for educational purposes. So that being said, our lunch and learn, of course, I've always already talked about the wholesale coaching with our Tag 716 Wholesale Network. That is a network of nationwide wholesalers who are literally out here looking for investor, looking for properties for their investors. And we network and work together to help each other out. We also do a lot of deep educational courses. All of our educational courses are free if you're a part of the network. So when we do landlord boot camp in July, they will get that for free. When we do wholesale network, wholesale boot camp in June, they will get that for free. And there's some other boot camps and master classes. We do a master class once a month. We have one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions by appointment, and we do our weekly Q and A, which will be Monday at 1 p.m. live on the Trinity Alliance Group Facebook page, not in the network Facebook page, but on our Trinity Alliance Group Facebook page. Our life and our lunch and learn on Monday will be live and it will be Q&A only. So anything you need to know about wholesaling or real estate investment will be asked and answered in that time frame. I will send a link out so everybody has it and they know. And I've already talked about TAG 716 University. That will be kicked off with our Wholesale Bootcamp. Now, do you guys have any questions regarding what we've reviewed today? Oh, thank you, Susan. We love having you. I did answer your question, Sean. Can you tell me what was it? Because I don't know. <laughs> Sean says I answered her question. But I have no idea what it was. So that, I guess that's a good thing. Cynthia, you had you wanted to um, do your one-on-one. -on -one. Did I answer your question this week when we went through our wholesaling process with the one-on-one? -on -one? Oh, you're accused of you're um, confused about the EMD and the total amount. Oh yeah, definitely. We make sure we clarified that part because we can't. Nothing messes with the money, honey. I was watching Major Pain, and I got that. I was watching Major Pain about a week ago with my son, and we were. He was like. Don't mess up the money, honey. <laughs> so, you guys, if you are okay with where we're going to leave off today, Monday will be Q&A. We will do Q&A regarding our wholesale real estate investments. It will just be a Q&A posted. It will be live on our Facebook page, and I will probably be in my office because... I'm going to say, forget the quarantine and go back to my office and start working. You will probably see a live stream from me this weekend as I walk around with my mask on. Got to walk around my neighborhood and see if there's some houses that I've missed and I need some exercise. So that's what we will be doing this week. It, as always, I wish you happiness, I wish you love, and I wish you peace and prosperity. And I'm hoping that you will join us again on Monday and I look forward to working with you all. Be safe, be focused, 
and stay home if you can because this this corona is still out here and it's, it's not going anywhere anytime soon i'm not saying stay stay in the house but at least stay safe and stay, stay home as much as you possibly can so we can try and figure this out all righty my dears my lovelies and my gents have a good weekend <laughs>